I'm going to vent today. I'm going to vent today about my trust issues. The girls I date don't want to hear that I have trust issues because my trust issues, they don't stem from past relationships. They don't stem from family trauma. They don't stem from you know, any normal trust issue origin story. My trust issues originated from self-reported pro day 40 times. They have had a concerningly high impact on my emotional well-being since I've been in the fantasy space. They're like a drug that I cannot quit. If you didn't perform at the combine, I get very upset with you. But when I see that pro day number drop, I'm, I'm, they, it pulls me back in. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at all the cowards and peasants and frauds that didn't compete at the combine but decided to run at their pro day. I found a resource via Twitter that apparently are verified pro day 40 times, which I still don't trust. I don't even know what verified means. Like, who did you get the 40 time from? Do they use lasers? Do they replay the 40s like they do at the combine? Who's verifying these? Is it the school? Because they're incentivized to make their player look better. Is it the agent? Because they're incentivized to make the player look better. Is it the player? Because they're incentivized to make the fucking player look better. Do you see how worked up I get? I probably need to see a therapist about this. Luckily, I found a way to vent. And it's through this. This is how I express myself. This is how I vent. This is how I get past traumatic experiences by coming on YouTube and screaming into my microphone at you. So I went on Twitter and I asked the question, is there anywhere that organizes all official pro day testing number? Here's the thing. If you ask for pro day numbers, you're going to get people literally giving you a range from like, oh, he ran somewhere from a 433 up to a four six zero really every fucking player in the nfl ran somewhere in that range i need official numbers and i don't even know what official means when it comes to pro days make sure you're following me on twitter if you're not already so i asked the question mr kent thank you for sending this over verified pro day results you know and then i said i don't even trust that these are verified the original poster said why i don't even want to get into it because it just really ain't that it's not deep enough for twitter but when you click on it it is a sheet that brings up every player, every position, every school that have done their pro day testing. I copied the sheet so that I could filter it and uh, move around some numbers and things like that to make it a little bit more digestible for you guys. But if you go to the original one, and if you're going to use this data at Alex Katzen, I suggest going through his original data because he has a uh, buy me a beer button on the top of it. So if you use the data, if you appreciate the data, because obviously he spends a lot of time on this, go buy the man a coffee or a beer or a margarita if you're a real one. I will link this sheet in the description of the video. So Alex, although it didn't seem like you liked me saying I didn't trust your verification system, I hope that you appreciate the number of coffees that you are going to be gifted over the next week. So for today's video, we are going to look at, I think there's about 10 super fantasy relevant rookies that performed at their pro day. We'll look at the relevant numbers and I'll tell you what I think it means relevant to where we should be taking them in rookie drafts or where I think that will impact their NFL draft capital. You know what we gotta do next. Let's get it. Here's another reason I have such a big problem with the pro days. And here's why I don't think they're necessarily comparable to NFL combine times. The environment is so different. Being in Indy, being out there for the week, going through the strenuous process of interviews and meetings and dinners and workouts and all these drills and all these things that you are doing while you're there affect your performance on the field but it's all relative to everybody else that's on the field so everybody is going through the same thing I've, I've seen some interviews and I've seen people I know a lot of people that go to these events and a lot of these players they fly out there so they're not at home they're not in their bed they're not around their teammates or their family or their friends or whatever they're waking up at six in the morning going to bed probably at one or two in the morning running on four or five six hours of sleep obviously affects their combine results they're not in their daily routine they're sleeping in a hotel it's all these different factors that are stressful to the player but every player is experiencing that same those same external factors which is why the combine is the great equalizer. The lights are on. The pressure is there. Can you perform when you're down and out, when your back's against the ropes, when you are bleeding? So if you don't perform at the combine, you're a coward. A lot of these dudes wait an extra month saying that they pulled a hamstring. They take an extra month to train or to gain weight or to lose weight. And guess what? These pro days are held 
at their college campuses. They get to sleep in their own bed. They get to wake up next to their girlfriend or their groupies at their school. They get to roll out, go to breakfast with their homies, go catch passes from their homies, go run with the homies, go get dressed with the homies. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a different environment. So I always take these pro day numbers with a grain of salt. I use player profiler to get my official numbers because I know they go through their due diligence to make sure that everything they put up on their website is official. Now with their 40 times, they always tack on an extra 0.05 to the time because what they found through a study that they actually did, I'm not just making this up. They're not just making this up. They went back and looked at players who performed at both the combine and their pro days. Statistically, what they found is over a very, very long period and a large set of data, pro day numbers relative to the combine numbers are 0.05 40 time better than combine numbers. So we always tack on the 0.05 to the 40 time from pro days for good measure again, to be the great equalizer. I don't know what that number is for, uh, you know, bench three cone shuttle or whatever. So those are what they is. Understood? Let's jump into the spreadsheet. Let's get fucking nerdy on a damn Friday morning. It's also important to note, like most of the guys who perform at the combine don't perform at the pro day. So they're not going to be on this list whatsoever. And a lot of dudes have not actually had their pro day yet. On the original sheet that Alex Katzen put up, there are two tabs on the Google sheet. One will actually list the date of everyone's pro days. Uh, he's also not posting anything until he gets official numbers on anything. So there will be more fantasy relevant rookies added to this list, but a lot of them were happening within this week, the last week or so. So I wanted to keep an update on it. If more really relevant player data comes out, maybe I'll make an update on this like next Tuesday or next Friday or something like that. But for now, this is the grouping that we have. So the first guy up is a dude that I've talked about a lot. It's a dude that I really, really like. Tyler Scott, Cincinnati. He already performed at the Combine, so I'm not sure why he tested again, but all of his numbers were pretty much exactly what they were at the combine 43940 you put that to a 444 the 444 what do you know it was exactly what he ran at the combine so i'm not really worried too much about that tank bigsby's a really interesting one he came in at 511 and a half 215 pounds ran a 44540 at his pro day which is obviously incredibly fast for someone who is 215 pounds but his numbers are kind of interesting cuz at the combine he did run the 40 and he ran a 456 so even if you tap on the 0 .05 to his pro day you're still getting a 0 0.06 faster score, faster time than what he did at the combine. The other really interesting note here too, a lot of dudes will, you know, sometimes weigh in at the combine, have a high weight, and then they'll do their stuff at the pro day, which when you start to do like weight adjusted, it looks a lot better. Tank Bigsby came in at 210 pounds at the combine and ran a 4.56. At his pro day, comes in at 215 and runs a 4.45. Now, had he had these numbers at the combine, we'd probably be thinking about Tank Bigsby a little bit differently. He might be at the top of that tier of dudes that we have no fucking idea what to do with. You know, the Tank Bigsby, the Tajay Spear, the Kendra Millers, those dudes. These are numbers that, like, again, I do take all of them with a grain of salt because who is the one timing them? Most dudes at Pro Days have some sort of incentive tip to make these dudes look better and timers are just not reliable are they laser testing it and going back and double reviewing it like they do at the combine to make sure it's exactly the right time i really don't know but if this is truthful then tank bigsby might be someone we need to open our eyes to a little bit next up we got jackson smith in jigba the eye prize the eye candy at the wide receiver position pretty much this year he did not test at the combine he did a lot of drills he did some agility drills which he ranked really 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 highly in didn't run the 40 waited until the pro day to run the 40 and he ran a 452 you adjust that to the mid 45 457 ish i think that if you had to bet where he was going to be beforehand that's probably around where he was going to be and, and listen like this is it, that doesn't matter for me wide receiver 40 times are a lot less predictable they, they matter a lot less than weight adjusted speed score for running back so jackson smith and jigba nothing and not a lot of new data here four five seven you know he's the player that you comp to like a keenan allen or so he's someone that's just going to separate and do really really good things across the middle of the field for the most part and those dudes don't run that fast so this was not surprising not a big deal not a big data point for me christopher rodriguez came in at five eleven and a half 217 pounds ran a four five two this was quite surprising i thought chris rodriguez was gonna test really really slowly and listen four five seven when we add the 0 0.05 to it is nothing to cream over it's nothing to like really really get excited about but he's not slow you know there's a lot of bigger backs that land in that four five five to four five uh four six range that are you know you can get excited about the rest of his numbers are not fantastic so i guess me I, I think chris rodriguez is gonna be like a, a mid day three late day three guy anyways so it's whatever but 
but I guess it was good to see. He was a guy that had been completely fading up to this point. Tajay Spears comes in, 201 pounds, identical weigh-in pretty much from the NFL Combine. He ran a 4.54 40-yard dash, which if you convert to 4.59 is not good for a dude who is 201 pounds pounds thought he was going to come in as a much more like explosive athlete he's not someone he did not run at the combine so kind of a disappointing score I would have liked him to like pro day you know pro day come in four four eight so it adjusts to a four five three or something like that I think I could have swallowed that pill but if you're going to be small it's hard to be small and slow and still be a big time player so I would say this is you know a little bit of an L for Mr. Tajay Spears who is everyone uh has fallen in love with this man and uh don't love it Kenny McIntosh somehow embarrassed himself further came in at 216 pounds so this dude Kenny McIntosh performed at the NFL combine just absolutely sank his own submarine coming in at 204 pounds and running a 462 so he was way undersized relative to what we thought he was going to do and he was also slow his pro day numbers he comes in at 216 pounds which is 12 pounds heavier and then runs a 470 so this dude was doing nothing but fucking eating in between that month and he runs a 47 so if you just had to 475 that's not even nfl running back caliber time like there's a threshold here you could be an nfl running back in the high four sixes you want to talk about the mid four sevens approaching four eight like you're off boards as a running back so this was another fucking l for kenny mcintosh now we've got a running back who is five foot ten 217 pounds and runs a 4-4-140 yard dash. A lot of buzz around this kid. A lot of buzz. And yes, I'm talking about Zamir White. Oh no, sorry. I'm talking about Izzy Abanikanda. Pittsburgh running back. A lot of people getting really excited about it. I don't blame him. He is absolutely a gym class hero. Not to take anything away from his actual on-field play, but 5'10", 217. That's real workhorse size. A 4-4-140 yard dash converted to, even if you convert it to 4-4-6, that's still a really good time for someone this size. 41 inch vertical, talking about real explosion. I think he is a great runway runner. If you give him an open hole, if you put him in a scheme where there are holes for him to hit, he can be very explosive. He could be the Latavius Murray type that breaks away big runs. If you remember him early on in his career, so he was ripping off really, really big plays. He is that type. He is the Tevin Coleman type. He is in that infrastructure. I don't want these numbers to, you know, get us over our fucking heads and over our skis when it comes to Izzy, but a phenomenal pro day, assuming that these numbers are actually official. Kayshawn Booty. Uh, didn't really do anything. Actually, I don't know why I put him on this list. 197 pounds, three cone, 708, which is a pretty average score for a wide receiver. Zach Evans, Ole Miss. So he came into the combine, didn't perform, but weighed in at 202 pounds. Went to the com- uh, waited for his pro day, weighed in at 208 pounds, did run the 40, 452. And actually, let's put these numbers in and see what kind of athleticism he's got. You can go to uh, RAS football. So you can go to RAS football and basically get the athletic score for any player that you want you just got to manually put in their data i will also link this down below if you give a fuck zacky poo position running back college old miss uh, i don't remember what his height was what is he fucking let's just say 510 208 pounds 40 he ran a four what did he come in at ran a four five two so if that's official that's not bad we're gonna put it up to the four five seven that we always do three cone 708 shuttle 402 Ooh, great shuttle great shuttle oh no it's four two six okay Makes sense. Vertical, 33 and a half. Broad, 10 feet. All right, so given the information that we have from Mr. Zaki Poo, he is uh, an okay athlete. Nothing great. Most of it good. He's all right. She came in at 5'11", so we'll redo that. 5'11", let's say, you know, let's just say the 40 time was official. Then what? What say you then? A little bit better. 756 athletic score. Again, nothing crazy, but average athlete at this point. Thought he was going to have a little bit more breakaway speed. It is what it is. The vertical, not great. The broad, okay. You guys can do this again with any players that you want. So if you're someone who's like, yeah, and pro day numbers are so fucking cool and legit and I love them, why don't you marry him? Why don't you go to the RAS score and fucking put him in the calculator? So Zach Evans, all right, showing. Not not great, not not. You know, not too sus, I suppose. So we'll have to wait for draft capital. And then the last last guy here on this list that I have no fucking interest in, but I've heard his name quite a bit. Poo, I don't even know how to say his name. Pukanuka. That's what we're going to go with. Pukanuka out of BYU. Uh, all around a very pretty poor combine performance. Nothing that was really eye-opening. He's a below average athlete when you put it into the RASCOR calculator. Ran a 4.57, put that at 4.62. 210 pounds, though. 4.62 is fine. Again, wide receiver 40 times are not very predictive. They don't really matter, especially when you have that kind of size. 
The rest of his stuff, though, agility, explosion, not fantastic. So just wanted to give y'all some quick updates on my life, on my trust issues, and on 40 times at pro days, which uh, both of those, the Venn diagram, are strikingly similar in how problematic they are for my personal life. All the resources I talked about in this video, you can grab them down below. I will link them. The Google Sheet to the Pro Day Times, as well as you know future dates of Pro Days. The RAS Calculator, RAS, however you weirdos in the Dynasty community say it. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And we will see y'all tomorrow. Noah's got a fucking heater dropping uh, with Brett Coleman. Excited to watch that one. Love you, come out.